Hey, Roger. Hey. What's going on? Not much. Got a little bit of snow again this afternoon. Did it stick? Yeah, we got some specks in the grass. We, we had a little bit of snow here today, but nothing really stuck. I don't know, it was around 32 most of the day, I think. Nothing, nothing to worry about. All right. Yesterday was really nice. Hi, Tom and Kathy. Hello. Hi, Mike. Hi, everybody else. Hi. Hi. Hi, guys. Patricia, Cindy is connecting to audio. It looks like she's connected. Are you ready? I, I'm trying. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, good. Because I haven't done so. I had set Zoom up yesterday on this computer, and I wasn't sure. Couldn't test it. So here I am. Yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Cindy. Let's uh, kind of kick around a couple minutes here, just in case anybody else is going to jump in. Tom and Kath, you guys get snow up there? You you should be about the same. You guys we've had a good. We've gotten a good bit of snow this winter. Not not recently here. It's been melting. A few yeah. snow flurries today, but uh, but uh, we had. Let's see. I think six inches more than our normal. Yeah, we we had a lot. It matter of fact, I mean, we got that heavy snow, and I we live on a cul-de-sac and. They kind of pile all the snow up along the on my lawn, and so I brought the tractor over and I pulled all the snow back and I pushed it up in a big pile for the neighbor kids. So that thing <laughs> will be that pile will be there till June now. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I got most of it off of my lawn anyway. We right. got we got this much uh, as much this year as we had the last two years combined, but we yeah. still way behind normal. Yeah, yeah. Most of ours came here in February. You you got all our snow. It went that way. Yeah, it did. All right, let's uh, let's dive in here. So, Cindy, tell us, you know, introduce yourself. Tell us where you're at. Go ahead and plug your nursery a little bit because we are going to uh, share this publicly. Okay, um, I am um, in Illinois, uh, Quad Cities, Moline area. Uh, just a little bit outside of the, uh, out in Illinois in, in a town called Cold Valley. Um, we're zone five. I have, uh, I guess, I don't, you know, honestly, I was thinking about it today as, as I was thinking about what I'd say and whatever. It's like, I do not know how or why I found your, you and your site. I, a couple years ago, I was just poking around and I did. I've always been a gardener. Of sorts but more so to have um a clean pretty yard not so much as to propagate and all that kind of stuff um so anyways when i found you uh that was in had been 18 2018 and i says hey i wonder if this really works so um we have uh i was able to raid my yard of everything I could possibly find, not rat compliant, and um, stuffed them in the ground uh, in the sand bed up next to a building that we, our barn. And uh, I was like, well, let's see what happens. Uh, unfortunately, that was in winter of, uh, winter of 18. Um, and in January of 19, that particular building burned down. So I'm thinking there is no way that those sticks that I stuck in the sand are going to do a thing. But lo and behold, in spring, after the snow melted and everything, three of the spirea actually rooted. And it's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> this stuff really works. And uh, so that that really fueled my bug. I'm going, okay, this this could this you know you have said in all your videos because once I found you, I started watching all of your videos on uh, freeplants.com and all that kind of thing. And um, I started doing it and of course all my family was looking at me like I'm crazy and I just started propagating left and right um, as much and anything I could find again not rant compliant but got to see if I can make it work I did a lot of that via the tub method uh, with just storage tubs and things like that and I had a lot of success um, so that was July of 19 I mean I said I'm doing this and that's when I joined you guys and I've learned a ton 
I've also learned a lot of what I don't know. <laughs> I still don't know, but uh, so uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of how I got started. Um, so last year, of course, I, um, <laughs> what was it? It was the winter of 1920. Um, I had already read uh, through a lot of Paul Brace's stuff on seed starting. I says, hey, I want to try that. Um, and I was just going to use the pool table that doesn't, you know, it's just a, it's not, uh, it's not really a pool table, it's just a slate. I was going to just use that and have my husband hang some uh, lights and stuff for me. But instead he built me uh, three shelves. Uh, a shelf unit that has three shelves on it and uh it's a, actually it's a flood flood uh drain flood flood drain shelf unit so it has a water tank underneath and i can turn on the pump and it floods the shelves and then it drains um and each of the shelves will hold eight trays of course i didn't stick to eight trays i filled it up and then i had way too many plants <laughs> But so he's built me three more of those shelves. So I have four of those shelves. And that's how I'm trying. I'm trying to propagate seeds and do it that way. I want to try and see if I can figure out how to get these shelves to do some sort of a humid, humidity chamber. Because our building burned down, I wasn't, uh, I, I don't know how to lay out my land. I don't know how to put where to put a, uh, a mist bed or any of those other things that are very, helps us be very successful. So I don't know how to lay all that out yet. But I thought, well, hey, I've got these beautiful shells. If I could use them for more than just um, seeds in the, in the winter, that would be awesome. So that's what I'm working on right now. That's still, I'm still definitely a, a work in progress. I'm not, I'm not sure that any of us really know how to lay out, you know, what we're trying to do. And it, it always gets changed and it gets re and then you think you got it exactly the way you want it. And a year or two later, you're like, nah, that's not what I want. I'm going to change it all around again. So uh, don't, don't bang your head too, too hard on that. Um, I, I want to, I'm going to chime in here because you, you uh, use a phrase rant compliant at least three times. And I know this isn't something that I publicly talk about a lot, um, but I, I really want our members to be aware of this. So basically, as you are well aware, I, I really chastise people who are just running around taking cuttings from anything that will hold still because there's no way in the world for you to figure out later what they are. You can't look it up on the Internet. You can't ask an expert because there, there are so many varieties that so that look so similar that you, you really can get yourself you can get yourself in trouble or you can just waste a lot of time like you know um i have this this written uh, rant thing that i I, po I post a lot and a buddy of mine you know him, he, he and i used to grow a bunch of stuff together and he stuck a bunch of uh, junipers i mean uh, arborvitas from his some his mom had in the yard and those things grew and they got big and they got nice. And we were selling a bunch of our rhododendrons and dogwoods and stuff like that to one of the wholesale growers. We couldn't sell those arbs because we didn't know what they were. And she, she could get in deep trouble for selling them to a landscaper if they were mislabeled. So, and then I, I snuck over to my neighbors and took some cuttings off of her for Scythia because I was certain that it was Linwood gold. What else could it possibly be? Right. Um, and I, we, we put a bunch of those in the field and then finally one spring, Larry and I both said, you know, the blooms on our forsythia don't look like those ones down at the local garden center. Well, come to find out the ones at the garden center were beautiful. They were gold. They were Linwood gold. We were calling ours Linwood gold and they weren't. And, you know, so get started on the right foot. It's all right to practice. It's all right to experiment. But when you're ready to start selling stuff, you really want to know, you want to have the tag for what you're propagating. So, um, and, and all of us here know that. It's something that comes up a lot because you don't want to get stuck with a thousand of something that you really can't sell because, you you know, you can retail and that's not a big deal. But boy, if you put them in the hands of a landscaper and they put them on a job, especially if there's an architect involved, you, you, everybody could end up in court. It, it, it's serious business. So anyway, I'm done ranting now. <laughs> yeah, that, that first summer, I, I was just testing the waters, trying to figure out and learn the process. Um, and in that time frame, I also started buying my stock plants and whatnot and uh, have big dreams of how I want to landscape uh, my land. Um, 
a lot, lot, lot less grass and a lot more flower beds. Uh, um, so after I signed up with you, I was able to go uh, down to Tennessee and I, I met with Craig Odin and um, Regina Booning Bunning and uh, had a great visit there and really learned what we could do, um, how this could work, even on small, small places or big places. <laughs> I actually have, I have 10 acres here, but most of it's under pasture with the horses or, you know, under a big shop building, which we rebuilt finally this year. So it's, uh, I gotta, I gotta pick my square, my, my little square for my, my little space uh, that I want to call my little piece of heaven. So uh, I kept reading on the board and last year, uh, before COVID, right before COVID hit, I sent in my growers uh, licensing. I uh, was, I think, like March 14th or something like that. Didn't get inspected until the 3rd of July because of COVID. But I, at this point, had plants to sell. I was like, well, now what do I do? So I kind of uh, sold them via yeah, garage, <laughs> fa off of Facebook, garage sales style. Um, I didn't have uh, a sales tax number or any of that kind of stuff yet. Um, but I had the plants, I needed to sell them. And boy, was I surprised. I, I would have never personally ever gone on Facebook to find somebody to buy a plant from, go to their house. I, I wouldn't have done that. Um, but I'm really surprised at the people that do. And of course, after being on the board with you all, I, I have learned a lot of how that uh, truly happens and how many people really do do that. Um, so I sold way more than I thought I would ever sell. I even went to uh, Lowe's and I would I would uh, look over their death rack, what I call the death rack, where they put all the things that aren't selling. And I would find things that I could buy. I bought some real pretty daisies, you know, give them a little love, some uh, May night salvia, give them a little love, make them pretty. And I turned around and I bought them for a buck and I sold them for six. So like, okay, right. that worked for me. <laughs> And, you know, I, I'm going to I'm going to point out because who knows how long this video is going to be around. But um, mm. me, Roger, Tom and Kathy, you know, we were doing this way before anybody was using Facebook for much of anything. And we were running newspaper ads and, and it worked just incredibly well, just like it does now. The only difference was with a newspaper ad you had to risk a couple hundred dollars and not know for sure whether it was going to work or not work, but it seems like it always did. I can remember, you know, getting ready to run. I, I, my plants are all picked over and I don't have that, you know, and I'm like, I don't know, is it worth it? Can I sell $250 worth of stuff? Well, you know, I, that means I got to sell 50 plants. All right, I'm going to take a chance. And then I still have another three or $4,000 weekend. So, <laughs> you know, Tom and Kathy will probably tell you the same thing with Roger. So with the newspaper, it worked incredibly well. With Facebook, it works incredibly well. And then probably sometime here in the future, we're going to be doing something completely different that we've never heard of, you know, the latest and greatest social media thing, who knows what it could be, but you know, everything goes in size cycles and in, in today's day and age, I don't think anything is going to hang, have the longevity that newspapers had. But, uh, and, and we're, we're always, you know, people are always, you know, we're talking Instagram and I think most of us are Facebook ads are showing up on Instagram because they, I think they own each other or something like that. But my point is, People hate, you know, and this is, people hate Facebook. We get, we get members all the time. So I don't like Facebook. I don't have a Facebook account. I don't want nothing to do with Facebook. Fine. But you don't have to get on Facebook and see what your cousin had for dinner yesterday. Nobody cares about that. You can just have an account, advertise your plants and stay the heck off of Facebook. It's just between you and your customers. And if you use it for that, you will learn to love it because you're going to meet some of the greatest people in the world who come and are tickled to death to be able to buy plants from you. I agree. I agree. I actually haven't got on Facebook. Oh, I don't know, 10 years ago or whenever it started. Probably that's not that long. Just to keep track of my kids. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't care about the rest of it. And now they don't even get on it and I'm using it for a business. So. Right. Works. Exactly. It, it's evolving. So what kind of, uh, I just went looking because you mentioned you were following some of Paul Brace's instructions and many years ago, before he wrote those instructions, Paul did a video and I'm, I don't know if you've ever seen it because I, um, 
I, not, I had I thought I had it on Mike's backyard nursery somewhere, but I just looked on a page that he has there, and I don't see it. But but anyway, it so he kind of showed his seedling thing in the basement, and then where they moved them into the stairwell <laughs> to kind of fertilize them before they moved them outside and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, I honestly don't even know where to find that thing anymore. So actually, I think you can find that on his website. Well, maybe, but I don't. You know. Yeah. I normally don't do that, so or, or don't drive people there. We, when we did no, that, that's true. it, it that's just true. got, it was so abused, it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. The members area was a junkyard of spam, and that's why I, I had to change the rules you. regarding that stuff, so. All right, so what are you selling? What, what sells really well for you? I focused, last year, I focused a lot on um, like butterfly attracting pollinator type plants. So just the, the black eyed Susans, various uh, cone flowers, daisies. Um, I have bought hardwood cuttings and I got uh, some willows and uh, those did really well. I was, I was super surprised about that. There, there, um, what else? Um, that was last year. A lot, of, a lot of last year was about just uh, blooming perennials. Uh, things like that. I really like doing deck pots personally. So I had some plants that I would like to put into deck pots and, and whatnot and kind of push some of that uh, to help people do patio pots. And things. Um, but most of that was still uh, the perennial flowers that I had started. What, what um, are you charging for those deck pots? Uh, I was, I was, it was a by plant. I, I still did it by plant, but I was like, hey, these things would look really good together oh. at, in a deck pot. I, I grew coleus because I like coleus, and I sold a lot of them, uh, interestingly enough. Uh, so those those are a great foundation part of a, of a deck pot, and I grew petunias. Uh, those were the two things I really pushed for, for to put together with deck pots, but um, I uh, did some, those were mostly for shade. I did the sun ones that had uh, black eyed Susans in them and uh, uh, blanket flower. And I don't remember what all you else know, I had. You know what Tom and Kathy put in the deck pots? Golden curls willow. Really? Yeah, isn't that right? Yep, absolutely. What do you guys use for a pot when you do that? Uh, it's a pretty large pot. <laughs> I can imagine. And, uh, we put stone in the bottom and then put the curly willow in and just keep it watered throughout the, the summer. And uh, it looks beautiful. Just by itself? That's all that's in there. Huh. No. Yeah, we can't what even you... take credit for that doing that. So, but uh, we had a customer that actually was out here at one of our sales and we had some curly willows and we had gotten those from Mike. We had bought one of his trays of them one time we were out there. And basically what, he, what he, we did is we brought them back, we put them in gallon pots and put them out there to sell. And a couple of guys were in here, college guys, and they, they said, oh, we put them on decks. I said, on decks? They said, yeah, we take big pots and pot them up and put them in decks. He said, they really are great. They're, and everybody loves talking about them, he said, when they come to our parties. So there was about 10 other people around there where all of a sudden I had, I had them flying out of here like crazy. And, and it was kind of, then my daughter said, well, I'm going to put one of my decks and see what happens Dad. And it, it works. It's really nice. They, they keep them trimmed. It's actually a nice thing they like to do themselves. They can kind of shape it the way they want to. So where you're located though, they could live in that pot year round, right? You're down in. No, oh no, they're, they're dorm, we're, we're in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania. Okay. I'm sorry. 6A and, uh, no, they go dormant in the winter. They just let them set in the deck. Next spring, they're they're off to the races again. That's, yeah, that's if you what... have if you have a big enough pot, right? They'll lots of stuff. Even the hydrangea paniculatas will overwinter in a big pot. Yeah, in a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And they used. I saw those on one of the home improvement kind of <laughs> shows. They filled the deck pots with willows for a screening. You know, on their little on their little deck. Because it filled out so quickly, yeah. yeah. And they have, they have a live screening. People like that today. They have live things there, so yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's what I do with the braided ones. I braid the golden curls together, and I put them in a big pot, and sell push them more for the patio tree like that. Because if you keep pruning the top, um, it takes away from the roots growing so much, and the pot keeps the roots in there. So it's kind of like a catch 22 for a while 
know, okay. I can't get everything they need so they don't grow as well as they would if they're put in the ground. So are you guys just putting them in a regular nursery pot or a decorative pot? Decorative pot, they're putting them in. A ceramic you know, I, type pot. Yeah. I always tell them to put them in a large uh, winter safe pot when they get them home, you know, something that's that can take the winter. And I just tell them to take them off the patio or the deck and set them on the ground somewhere in a protected area so they don't get, you know, ice dropped on them or something like that. And then they'll be right back at it. And I cut them all way back so that they're just stubs and all the branches. And then they take off growing with all the curly Q branches and stuff, even the leaves. So it makes them very interesting that way. Oh, dang, I didn't get any of those for hardwood cuttings this year. <laughs> Thought about it, but I didn't pick any up. Minor, well, minor gone. Mean. Sorry. Uh, I figured. Well, <laughs> well, come on down, Cindy. I got plenty. I just cut all mine. All right. Yeah. We're asking for it. There, there's probably gonna be. If you if you post on the board, somebody probably has them. I don't. I don't have any right now. Start them. Start them about three foot long, and you're up. You're really get a good start on them too. Huh. Yeah, we haven't tried that three foot thing yet, but it looked a little interesting to me, and. I think I might give that a try and see what we can do. I've got right. some of mine. I've got some of mine out back right now. They're about eight foot oh. tall. Uh, I'm, I'm sticking that way. What's the that? guy that discovered that plant and brought it to market is a local guy here in Perry. He, he's deceased now, but his grandson still runs that nursery. But he used to take cuttings, and he they would be at least four foot, three quarters of an inch in diameter. And then he would just stick them in a three gallon container and put them out there with everything else and they would root. Oh my gosh. I, I cut mine down. I have two of them and I cut mine down to like six or eight inches tall every year. And they just put out a whole lot more branches every year. Some of them get to be about three quarters of an inch in diameter. And then if they get eight, nine feet tall or something like yeah. that, summer. Just this now, if they'll eat it, if you don't want to use that, put it in that bag and I will get some new one. Okay. Roger, are they uh, pretty thick in diameter when you stick them? Yeah, I mean, some of them, I, I just cut them off and I go through and take off the side, any side growth to them uh, and just let them be whatever they are right now. And some of them are like three quarters of an inch, half inch, stuff like that. Do you the smaller them? Ones, what's that? Stake them? Uh, right now they're in a I got a, like a five gallon uh, nursery pot that I put sand in. I stick a uh, big bamboo right down the center and I put them all, I stick them all the way around it, so, you know, circular around and then I just tie them up near the top like a teepee. You're sticking a bunch in, in one container to get them yeah, rooted. To root them, yeah. Here, I can, I can show you, Roger told me how to do it. I can show you mine. Like, yeah, but I do it the right around. way. Hey, bud. I'll beat you. He can't smack you on Zoom. Uh, <laughs> she just she'll just she'll just call me and bug me. Oh, I have all. to get rid of that background picture. Yeah, I don't know how to get rid of it now. See, you you tricked us. We thought that that was legit. Uh, all right, uh, well, questions. that's my that's my unheated hoop house. That's all the woodies I have in there. It's a ton. Let me. All right, I'll come that back is. when I get it done. All right, Cindy, anything else that you want to uh, um, that we haven't we haven't talked about? Um, not particularly. I mean, that's that's what I've been doing with my nursery and where it's going. I'm anxious for spring to get here. Um, I brought in trees and some other odds and ends now so that that'll be a different avenue to try. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much where I'm at. Um, I'm, I'm now faced with the uh, pest control of my basement, but <laughs> we'll figure that one out. The gnats and the aphids and stuff, but I'm anxious. It's, I'm, I'm real excited about the whole thing. Hey, Joe. All right. Do you, do you guys have crazy stuff on the screen or is it just me? No, I, I, I got it. Yeah. I've, it, my other screen, yeah. Yeah, it's our, um, our the link to the Zoom, Zoom meeting. Yeah, it's Joe's, yeah, Joe, Joe's screen is showing. Joe, we're, we're looking at your screen. Um, try to get us out of that. Yeah. He's, oh. yeah. Um, 
I'm, I'm going to sign off and come back in here and stuff. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Just yeah, you know, just turn off your video and uh, until you get it figured out. Okay. We're looking at your screen is what we were what we were seeing. So we still are. <laughs> yeah, we still are. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, the whole here. thing. I'm going to totally sign off and I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> okay. How in the world? Oh, <laughs> hey. now, we, now we got Cindy I, again. I think I got this figured out. Let's see. Oh, look Wait. at you. Turn around. Come on. Well, you now my camera's a, not. You, my camera's you, not. You had her there right there. Go. Don't move. Whoop. Can you, you see anything? Yeah, yeah you can just see your pots. Yeah, yeah, I got pussy willows and willows, other willows, and there's a bamboo stake in the mm -hmm. middle, yeah. and I tied them, and then I put a a T post here to tie yeah. them to. Yeah, because if there's what hap what happens is if that and if it's a smaller pot and they freeze, you get a wind and that just blows that whole thing over. That's why I attach it all to a stake. I mean, I've got a, I've got an upright two by four that holds the, my shade cloth up in the summer. That's what I use to anchor them to. How, how long do you leave them in there before you pull them on and separate them, Roger? Uh, probably summertime sometime. Middle of summer? Yeah, when I get a chance to it. Thank you. The uh, somebody put the post the link on the post this today about the uh, wanting to see my video that you did a couple years ago here. Yeah, the boxes and then the, I'm standing there and you can see what I did. I had the ones up there right now. You can see them standing there by the pole behind me. Okay, Cindy, we let's go. Uh, you were trying to say something before we got all sidetracked there, so. Um, I don't know. Brain dump. I, <laughs> oh, no sorry. idea where I was going with so, that. You guys have questions for Cindy? Comments? All right. Um, Mary Rose, you're new. You got your your uh, you got to unmute yourself. Yeah, unmute that. <laughs> yeah, I'm new. We're, sorry, I just I, wanted to sit in and listen. Um, I'm really new. <laughs> so. that's, that's all right. <laughs> new is good. <laughs> where where are you located? In Wisconsin, all in right. a, um, near the uh, Minnesota border. Not too far from there. Cold. Yeah. Yep. When does when does your stuff start leafing out? Uh, not yet. We still have a lot of snow, um, but we're getting into the 40s this week, so hopefully it'll melt. All right. Okay. You're you're not a lot different than we are this week, then. Oh. <laughs> so if you you just started, have you got anything going on? I've just started buying off the board, okay. um, and that's as far as I am so far so and that's that's uh working out for you yeah there, there's so far it's been working there's, there's some really good stuff available there you know yeah and it, it changes fast you know and it it kind of goes with the seasons too what you're seeing now will be very very different than what you see in April May or June so oh okay I was wondering if everybody sells their stuff now or if it keeps going for a while I wasn't sure it, it, it goes on forever because there's always new stuff coming on. Um, a lot of times we'll see um, Japanese maples, either, either um, grafted maples or, you know, rare varieties or just Japanese maple red seedlings or green seedlings. Um, I don't know. Did Neil, has Neil listed his Japanese maples yet? Anybody know? I don't, I don't think seeds. he's doing them. He's, he's not doing any? He's not going to offer them this year? He said he wasn't going to do any more grafting than selling them, so I don't know. And I don't know how many, he doesn't have that many 
Bigger yeah, he, pr he probably didn't, didn't do that many. So uh, Horace and Lisa offer him three or four times a year. And then who's the other guy? Is he in New Mexico? I'm not, uh, is it uh, he's, he's in Carolina somewhere. Is he? Yeah, he, uh, he usually offers a bunch too. So Okay. Uh, somebody, somebody has uh, red seedlings on the board now, I believe. Do they? I don't, I don't pay a lot of attention. I go in there and you know, ma do maintenance, but I don't open all the ads. <laughs> Have you tried growing them from seed? I bought some seed from, bottle. I think. Yeah. Um, what? I had to get the one out of the I shop and gas. Uh, hey, hey, Joe, mute you, your audio, okay? Um, just wait, because it's kind of warm. I think it's Patricia's audio. Sorry. Patricia, can you, Patricia, can you mute your audio? All right. Um, so doing them from seed. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've done them from seed. Uh, Roger, you, you you guys do Japanese maples from seed, Tom and Kathy? I know Roger does. I try anyway. Oh, yeah. They don't, you don't. They don't grow very fast here. Though. That's a problem. If you're in the north, you're only getting what four to six inches in a growing season. Yeah, if we're lucky. And the ones we buy out of North, out of uh, Oregon, they're like 24 inches in a growing season. Oh, it's really? Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I just got 600 of them um, last week, and they were probably they they were good 18 to 20 inches. So. I do have, those end up on the board or do I have to go look for them somewhere else? I, yeah, that was uh, one of our, the wholesalers that, you know, they, they've got a big minimum though. Their, their minimum is like $750. So, oh, okay. But they've got a lot of stuff to choose from. I've got, I got uh, weeping Japanese maples and pink dogwoods and seedlings and uh, um, I don't know, something else. I, there's, I, I did a big order and I split it with my my niece's husband. So, so between us, we spent about seven thousand bucks. Yeah, there's there's some red seedlings on the board, I believe. Right now, uh, if you look, I'm not sure who okay. has them, but yeah, I saw them last night. Usually, though, like the red seedlings, you can find them, you know, anywhere from like on the board and on the board, two and two two and a half bucks an hour. Or I think they like were. That. I think it was it had a couple. They were a couple bucks a piece. Yeah, I think I paid a buck and a half, you know, for the ones I got. But that, that, they fly out the door at six ninety seven. So uh, it, it's a good item to have if you can put a Japanese red maple in your ad for seven bucks. People are going to be impressed. So, so, so Mike, what are you going to do with all of those? Are you going to put them in a field and let them grow out, or just stick them in pots and sell them? Well, well only three hundred of them are mine. Okay. Um, I'll probably pot a hundred of them to sell this year. And then I'll take the other 200 and I'll put them in a bed about eight inches on center and just, you know, kind of keep them mulched and weeded. And then, uh, every year I'll dig out the biggest ones and, you know, sell them for whatever price I think they're worth at that time, you know? So, so my question, uh, another question is on those, I noticed in some of your videos, it looks like they previous orders that you've had, you, you, you've uh, just put them out in the big opening uh, out without any shade protection or anything like that. And I was of the understanding that maples, Japanese ma maples needed more protection from the elements. They do like to be protected from the sun. If you, if you put them out, especially like the lace, lace leaf weeping varieties when they're young, um, it, it's hard on them. It doesn't necessarily kill them, but it, it's hard on them. So uh, if you can offer them 50% or 30 or 40% shade, 50% shade, they're, they're going to be much happier. Okay. All right. I don't, I, I don't do that. Even, even these are going to go in the full sun. So, and, and then they'll probably get overhead water. So I'm doing everything wrong that you could possibly do with them. And they'll, they'll tolerate me. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Sheila Moreland had those red Japanese maples, but they're sold out. Oh, no. And they were four bucks a piece. Yeah, they, they, they've gone up in the last few years. You know, everything has gone up. So, um. yep, supply and demand. 
Exactly. Well, exactly. That's the thing right now with the, the with even well, the economy has just been going in this uphill slide, and then COVID really ramped up the green industry, and everybody has been sold out about just about everything. Uh, if, if we what was it two weeks ago when we interviewed Nathan, and Nathan has been working his tail off for for ten years, and he said. He opened last spring, and I think he said he was completely out of plants in in twelve weeks or something. You know, that's a lot of plants. And yeah, and he said he's he bought in what he what he say he spent forty nine thousand dollars on plants that he was buying in, and that's all little stuff. Those aren't ten dollar plants. Those are all little things that he's buying. So, yeah, he he sold a ton of stuff. All right, uh, Cindy, do you have any questions for us or Mary Rose questions? Andy, how are you doing today? I wrote a list. I was trying to see what was on my list. Not really. Um, no, I've, I've been listening to the videos and, and the previous ones before this one. I've been very informative of a lot of the stuff I already had questions on. So it's, uh, it's nice. All right, uh, Mary Rose, questions? Tom and Kathy, you have comments? Anything you want to say? We uh, are having wholesalers calling us now wanting arborvitas. They are in hot demand right in this area right now. We wish we had a whole field of them. You know, I, I, I had wholesalers call me two, three years ago. And they, you know, they're like, you know, if you got them three foot, I'll take 400 of them or something. You know, I'm like, you know, I, yeah, I've, I've got them at 18 inches. I don't, probably don't have 400 of them. So, yeah, it, it's been crazy. You know, and then local, you know, a local friend of mine came in, a local guy a couple of years ago, and he's like, he's looking for some green giants. And I had a bunch of them at that time. He took a look and he's like, what do you want for my guy? I don't know. What do you, you know, you tell me what he's like, well, I don't want to insult you. I'm like, you're not going to insult me. Give me a price. And you know, I can either sell them with that or I can't. And it's like I said, that time I had a, had a bunch of green giants and I don't even remember. I, I sold him a bunch of them for five bucks, I think. And you know, uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, but he was going to put them in the ground and, and keep them growing them on for a year or two and probably, you know, those things it like seven or eight foot tall are bringing 80 bucks. I mean, it, it's just crazy what the, the prices that they get. I mean, but if you want to be in that market, you know, you, you know, if you're going to be in that market, you got to be able to get them out of the ground and that's not that much fun. So you got help to do that. That's fine. Or, you know, they probably machine dig almost everything that size anymore. So, but even then it takes a crew of guys to machine dig them by the time you dig them and, you know, get a ball on them and you got to tie that ball up and tie the top and all that kind of stuff. So, all right. What else we want to talk about before we wrap this thing up? We're kind of running low on topics. And if you guys have things that you want to discuss, I don't know. I, I, I'd love to do I'd love to do more of these in the spring, but I don't want to make that promise because we all know what spring is like, and it's you, all you can do to keep your eyes open, let alone. Um, but we'll let's see how it goes, and if but if there's anything that you want to you know, discuss, just bring it up in the members area, and we'll we'll do another meeting, you know, within the next couple of weeks, and, and kind of dive into that. Um, I'm kind of. Uh, blank right now. I'm not sure what else we should be covering right now. I, I will tell you this, and this is something I probably needed to do a video on. Um, I've got a bunch of Japanese maples that I've had planted around my place for a number of years now. And they're, they're getting a little bit bigger, and I thought, you know, first of all, I got some that are way out back by the donkey fence. And I don't have, I, di I didn't have water out there, and I did just run a water line, but I want to get them dug and get them out of the ground before they're too big. And so, they're in a they're in a weird place. They're kind of on a hill, uh, so I'm just going to bare root them, and then I build a ball out of potting soil. And and you know that's something I want to kind of show people how to do, because if if you do it right, it works out pretty good, and um, it's probably easier than trying to dig a ball on something that's still in the ground. I've got to I've got to move one of mine again. I've already moved it once. I moved it one way to make room away from another tree, and that tree got too big, so I'm moving it back again. A little bit. Yeah, that'll be fun with the roots from the other tree there. So, yeah. 
All it's right. bigger than I am. So. All right, what else? I'm gonna put you guys in charge. What do you wanna talk about? Hey, Mike, this is Andy. Hey. I, uh, I've, I've been able to get up with uh, Spring Meadow and uh, Evergreen uh, last yesterday. And uh, they're, they're like everybody else, they're really busy. And both of them had um, IT problems. It's why they had not gotten back with me. It's kind of interesting, but um, very nice, very nice uh, sales reps. Uh, one question, the, uh, like the quick turns, are you guys growing those out a little bit or are you just selling them when you get them? I've never done them. Uh, Sandy Ascot does a bunch of them. I think she just sells them at whatever container, what are they shipping them in? Like in a quart or something or? Yeah, it's a quart. Yeah. 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 And, and she just flips them. Right. And she flips them for a, a pretty good price too, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, she has that, she has a little bit of Chicago traffic, you know, that comes down her way. But she sells that little bitty pot cheaper than what Spring Meadows does online. But yet they're like $12, $13, you know, for that one quart pot. But they're multi, you know, branched. They're yeah. nice little plants. What, what are they, Joe, what do they charge for them? Or Andy, what do they charge for them? I don't know. I have. I've just. I just walked in the door from my regular job. So um, I. I. They. They sent me an email with the availability and the prices, but I have not opened it. Looked at it. Yeah. Um. You, you should be able to double your money on them. You don't have to give them away. So. Okay. And she. She yeah. does it because they're. You know. They're. They're. They're things that she. That. You know. A lot of them are patented, so she can't even propagate them. So, but she just buys them and flips them that way, and it. You know. Right. It's just, it's not, and not and most of those, most of those are the hydrangea paniculata that she does. You know, that's that's mostly because what she, she does doesn't like in. to sell macrophyllis to her customers because no, they, they can be so finicky. Yeah. Nope. We've bought several uh, quick turns from Spring Meadows several years ago. We did that, and yeah, we potted them up and put them down and let her walk them out of here. Well, yeah. she doesn't even repot them. She oh, sells really? them right in that quick turn pot. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I look at it, I'm like, man, I sure couldn't give $15 for that little bitty pot, but you know. You couldn't, but you're not your customer. No, no. That's, I was, that's, what, that's an important thing to remember that you are not your customer. When you look yeah. at, you, you know, online sales are incredible right now. And the prices that they get for things, you, you all you do is Google something and it's like, holy cow, but they, they get that, you know, there's a gal here that did, I, I, I last, I knew she was doing a lot of online and she was buying you know, like one and two gallon plants from local growers, but she was, you know, buy it for eight or ten dollars and sell it online for 60 now I, I think she was using pay per click advertising so she had some costs in acquiring that customer, but it's amazing what people are willing to pay, you know. Well, and Proven Winners, they actually are selling retail now online. And you're buying that quick turn pot and like they're selling it for 20 bucks, $25. They're selling that little bitty pot for that much money. Right. Yeah. Blue, did you see uh, Bluestone was, I got an email the other day. They were selling some of their uh, cone flowers in a three and a half inch square by four inch deep pot for eighteen dollars a piece. Yeah, and, well, that's and, that's just about all they sell. I've been to their place up there, and everything's in those little pots. But eighteen dollars for a cone flower. Yeah, yeah. you know. What? But I'll, I'll tell you what. A few years ago, when I first discovered coral bells. I was buying them at uh, the, the Yankee Peddler. Some gal from Conneaut was going there setting up and she had these really interesting vines. So I was buying them there from her. I don't remember what I was paying her for them. Then I, I, I looked in Bluestone's catalog and I ordered $350 worth and I paid like 14 bucks a piece for them just because I wanted the varieties for my landscape. So it, yeah. it's just a matter of what you, know, what you want. I mean, I had Japanese maples at my That's other house cool. And I, I bought two of them, and I, I, I paid 500 bucks for the both of them. So um, plant nuts like us are willing to pay up for the things that we yeah. want. And I guess yeah. that's part of my thing, too, because I don't 
go to the private nurseries that much anymore. You know, right. I go to Lowe's and Menards because they're more my competitors. And so, yeah, I'm sort of, I need to go and see what a full grown perennial runs in a gallon right. pot now. Yeah. 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 And I'm like you, I don't, I don't get out much. I don't, you know, no. once in a while, if I'm in a big box store, I'll blow through the garden center at a hundred miles an hour, but I really don't. Don't don't look at much. So uh, to go to a full service garden center, man, I can't remember when the last time I did that. But yeah, it's, it's something that's important that we should do. So yep. Well, we're very fortunate. We have two huge garden centers uh, about uh, two miles on one to the north and one to the south of us, and we usually just kind of browse through there to see what they're selling and what they're charging, and then we're under there just a little bit and. We sell it. That, that's a good point, though. You've got two huge garden centers. How many big box stores? Oh, with Wal Walmart's. Walmart's about five miles from here. Target's two miles from here. Uh, Lowe's is about ten miles from here. So common sense, well, most people would say that I, this is never going to work because I've got two giant garden centers and I got Walmart and I got Lowe's and I got Target. How in the world is, can I sell any plants at all? You guys sell a couple of plants every spring, don't you? A few. A few. Yeah, I know. I, I know <laughs> how many a few is. <laughs> but but that, that's the point. People and people are happy to buy from you. They're they're excited to buy from you because they're they're just kind of done doing business with corporate America. Well, they they know what the big box stores are selling theirs for because they advertise. So they come here first to see what we have because they know we're a little bit cheaper, and they end up buying most everything here. If they're looking for something specific, they'll go to one of those stores that we don't have, um, but. Yeah, they usually shop here first and then go. And a lot of times they'll shop there first because they're looking for something and then they like, ah, I'm not going to pay that or, you know, and I, I know I can do better down the road. So, and I'll tell you the other thing, we, we get green signs. We have green signs made kind of like a real estate sign. And uh, we have huge plant sale on those and arrows. And I put them just within a, like a half, I'm gonna expand it out a little bit this year to be honest with you, but it's amazing the amount of people that are driving through or going somewhere uh, local, not even on our road or even, you know, they're over a couple of roads and they see the signs and they start following the arrows. And we, we were amazed, the more time we get to talk to people, because sometimes you just don't get to talk about much stuff, but it's amazing how many people tell us Oh, we saw your sign and we've been going through, there's a little town right next to me here called Brunerville. You blink your eyes and you're through it. But at the crossroads, we have a sign with an arrow and pointing our way. And they say, we've been going through here for five years and we've never seen your seen that you were here. And, you know, but finally they saw the sign. I think in their mind, they were looking for plants and they saw the sign, huge plant sale and boom. That's there, all there. the sign, sign says is huge plant sale with an arrow. Yep. Yeah. That's all I put on. I used to put four, when I started, I had 497 on them. Then a couple of years later, we went to 597. I said, well, these signs are lasting. I'm not going to put price on anymore. I'm just going to put a huge plant sale and they still come just because it's a big plant sale. Right. Do you, do you talk to the people that you put the signs in front of their yard? Yeah. Well, yes. At Christmas time, I, I have a tendency to stop off and drop them. Here we have a, we had a candy factory here in Lid. It's called Wilbur. And made Wilbur buds and things. I don't know if you ever, you heard of Her Hershey Kisses. Same thing. Only a lot of people think they're better. And so yeah. I deliver a, a box to each of the people that let us put signs on their oh. at their at the property and stuff. You know, at Christmas time, they love me. <laughs> <laughs> That's important, though. Oh yeah, so it's do important. You, do you pick them up, or you're you're not open? You're only open on the weekends, aren't you? Well, we're we're open. We were open Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays. Normally, when we first started, it used to be just Friday and Saturday, and uh, we expanded to Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We're, this year, we're planning to do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays uh, for so us. So, do you pick? Do you pull the signs up when you're not open? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. They go up Wednesday night and come down Saturday night. Okay. So, if you're open Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, what what happens if somebody shows up on Monday or Tuesday? We take care of them. Do you? Yeah, they drive in, if they drive in the driveway there, 
and I and usually I'm out doing work anyway. That's the only reason I don't have open every day is because I got to catch up and work, you know, right. and, and replenish and things like that. So if we see them or anything, or if they call us and call us or emails or something, however, we have most of you probably know we have a pretty large email list of past customers, and they have a tendency. We see them driving up and down the road here on the days we're not open. They're looking, they see our clothes sign out there, you know? So if I'm out there, I just wave them, come on in, you know, and they come in and get plants and things like that. We don't make a big issue out of it. Some people would, I guess. Well, if you could go to the two big market stores in there and they're closed, the doors are locked, so you can't get in. So yeah. here they can come in. We're, yeah, we're, going, we're going for closed on Monday and Tuesday this year. So they're going to have time to do something. Well. I, I transitioned into the nursery business after I retired from work so I could go fishing once in a while. The last year, you just could chuck that out the window because we, we were just crazy. It, there was no time to go fishing. And I said, this year, Monday and Tuesday, we're gonna, I, at least I've got to slip a little fishing time in there once in a while, you know, so. Yeah, I was gonna say, good luck with that. <laughs> fishing. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to let Kathy here and tell my daughter to come out and visit and, and they can take care of anybody <laughs> driving the lane. <laughs> well, you, you need some gone fishing signs then. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Don't give me many ideas. Yeah, I guess instead of clothes sign, I'll just put, I'll just put clothes yeah. gone fishing. <laughs> yeah, I asked because you know, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to put in less hours, you know, kind of kind of like you are and I mean, we'll, we'll go seven days a week, you know, April through mid June, but then after that, I'm trying to automate some of my water and stuff. And then I'm just going to put up a sign that's uh, on the gate. Cause I got a gate that it only blocks half of the driveway because I share that driveway with my neighbor, you know, so I, so I, but anyway, they see the gate and then they know we're closed because until I did that, they were driving back in there and they're feeding the donkeys and that's fine. But then Next thing you know, some guys back there loading up plants. They figure out you're not around. You know how it is. That's that one in a thousand that just doesn't know how to act. And um, so, you know, so I put the gate over the clock close time. So, I, I, you know, I'm going to get a sign that says, you know, sorry, we're closed. This is a part time slash retirement business. We do the best we can. You know, if you want to know when I'm going to be here next call or something. So because I, I definitely like you. I, I want to be able to get away from there once in a while and kind of have a life yeah you try to sometimes mike but it, i i kind of laughed last week i went to a, a neighbor over here i have a fellow who grows some plants takes care of them for me i own them and i pay him a stipend to take care of them and uh he he due to some family problems he he has to he has to stop it and then i had another neighbor a neighbor right across the street from me literally with a farm said Boy, and he was talking to me one day. He said, "Boy, Tom, I'd be interested in being doing something." So he's gonna he's gonna take care of, of some perennials for Kathy and I during the planting season. Nice. So we have a place to, to stick them because we our inventory gets pretty large. We discovered we had how many did I say two hundred and sixty two two hundred and sixty two different variety, kinds of plants here. Okay, yeah, wow. that we sell. So it gets it gets kind of crowded. But uh, it was interesting. So I made a deal with him. And then he and his wife sat down with me and said, Tom, uh, we want to, we, we'd like to grow more plants. And uh, sorry, and I'm going, do I really want to do this? You know, they said, well, you know how to sell them, Tom. We, we, we'll grow them. <laughs> and you know what? The growing is the hardest part. The selling's easy, you know, yeah. in my opinion. Okay. But uh, the growing part is a lot simpler than that. But it's, it's always interesting. The challenge is me. The, and they say, you can just tell us what to do and we'll do it, you know, and things like that. And, uh, and uh, when you have opportunities like that, you go, should I do something or shouldn't I, you know? So, so we have to kick it around a little bit here and see what we want to do. Yeah. When I, when I first started, <clears throat> I filled my backyard up with plants and then uh, I was landscaping. So I had these two guys working with me that I've known for a long time. And Larry's like, I got all kinds of room in my backyard. I'm like, all right, I'll buy the plants. You take care of them. We'll, we'll dig them together, sell them and split the money. And then Dale's like, well, I got that lot down the road. So next thing you know, we got all three places full of plants, you know? <laughs> and so it, 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 it grows pretty quick sometimes. Yeah, that's one of the hardest things is keeping it scaled to what you can handle. I mean, I have a full-time job outside of this as well. And 
family and all that kind of stuff. Also, they want a little of my time. So keeping the scale down is, is challenging because now it's like, I want everything. I want all the plants and I don't that's know. cool. And I don't even know how many varieties I have, but I, I'm getting ready to build a uh, file card box for, for bench carts because Pam does all the bench carts. She makes them and she's the one who puts them out and makes sure they're clean. And she's got all these plastic bins full of bench carts. I want to make her a, a long box that she can file and put some tabs in there that will actually set on the back of her golf cart. Golf cart. And it's going to be I don't know. I, I'm going to measure the, everything in the boxes to figure out how long it's got. It's probably going to be three and a half foot of bench cards, you know. So, family be riding a wheelie going down the driveway. Yeah, exactly. She, <laughs> I don't know. She loads that thing up with plants. She moves more plants on a golf cart than most people can in a pickup truck. So, and if mine are in a pretty good sized box, you know, about that long. Yeah. My cards are small though, but I've got a bunch more I got to do yet. All right, what else we need to cover? Questions, answers. Joe, what are we looking at now? Your inventory? Uh, well, the funny thing is last year I sold a tremendous amount of stuff off from Marketplace. And I drew a tremendous amount of people from the north. And I would jokingly tell a person when I, they told me where they were from, I said, well, you be sure to tell the other 10% that uh, about me down here because 90% of, and I would name the town, knows about me. And it, it was just in that area, it was just unbelievable the amount of people that I got. Well, Tom. Remind from, us I'm, where you're located again. I'm up in Northwest Michigan. Uh, I'm about 100 miles from the Mackinac Bridge, uh, 25 miles northwest of Traverse City. Okay. Tom Jesmore are kind of neighbors. We're 18 miles apart, thereabout. Um, but uh, anyhow, Tom sent me a price list of one of the nurseries that I was drawing a lot of this customers from. And my God, they turn around and I don't know how well you can see it, but the price list on some of these hydrangeas or quart pots. 25 bucks. Some of the, the Coral Bells are $18 for a trade gallon, $22 for other premium trade gallons and stuff. Now, is this a mail order or how do they sell? No, this is a, this is a regular nursery, you know, a, a garden center. Huh. Um, it's, <laughs> it, it's, there, it's, it's no wonder. Now, Regina had mentioned something about the Spring Meadows, Quick Turns, um, selling them in the Quick Turns. Um, I've done it both ways. When I, uh, last year was the first time with uh, Spring Meadows. And I got my first shipment in, in uh, Quick Turns. Well, you know, you're raring and wanting to sell, and I started selling. And I sold a lot of them for 15 bucks. Um, just right off the truck. I think that's what Sandy does too. I think she gets about 15 bucks for them. And, but with this price here, I mean, I, I'm almost thinking I've got to go up and stuff. Me and Tom are kind of discussing this, whether we should or shouldn't and stuff. But my God, when I got competition and basically selling, um, you know, obviously I don't know how flushed out of one of their trade gallons are or anything, but, you know, um, but if it's just, yeah, I, I, I did start potting up into the two gallon pots um, when I got time and stuff and kind of set them aside to let them fill out a little bit. And I still got 15 bucks for them. But yeah. it was, it was, but if you allow me, I will post this price list on the board and let you guys turn around and see what the prices up here of some of this stuff is going for. No, I'm, I'm fine with that, you know, because people, uh, it, it's important to see what, what people are willing to pay for stuff and, you know, it kind of helps us. I mean, cause, you know, we, we all struggle with this because of it, you know, where we take a stick and stick it in the ground and put roots on it and turn around and sell it for um, $7 and that seems excessive, but 
other things, you know, when you start buying stuff in and you're even a liner, you're paying three and a half bucks for it, you, you really need to be getting more money for that. You know, you don't have to, but um, you certainly can. And that's, as I slow down and do fewer plants, I, my prices are probably going to go up because if I don't, if, if I have any problem getting with resistance on retail, if I put them in a trade gallon, I've got brokers that'll move them for me wholesale. So, well, it, it, the thing with me and Tom is Tom's around the Traverse City area and he, he does that area. And I turn around and try to concentrate uh, on my area and north of me. Well, the, the area north of me, they've got a few nurseries up there, but they're all ridiculously overpriced and people love to buy plants. And people up there has got money, so I'm sure they're selling them for $25 a piece up there. Oh, yeah. But they just, people with money, that's how come they got money, because they look for deals. And um, and they, you know, I've had people, oh, uh, let's see. Um, I've had people from, I think they told me, nine miles southwest of the Mackinac Bridge come down here last summer and buy plants and stuff. And. You know, they were having rave about how cheap, you know, my prices are and the prices we're talking about is, you know, 15 bucks, you know, for a, a proven winter hydrangea. And, but basically I sold uh, everything um, at 15 bucks for the proven winners and stuff. Um, so it's, it's, it, it's amazing, you know, what, what people are willing to pay and then they come to me and it's like, oh, wow. And I just smile all the way to the bank. Yeah. But that's that's about it. Um, I wanted to get your permission to post that on the board and to tell you my experience with the spring meadows on those um, quick turns. So. And then they 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 turn out a pretty good product. I bought a ton of liners, uh, lilacs, and stuff from them a, a few years ago. You know, it was all pretty good stuff. So. Does um, anybody know what the difference is with spring meadow when they have a, a four-incher? And then you've got Evergreen Nursery there in Wisconsin. Um, they're selling, um, oh, I think it's a, a, I think it's a quart. What's the difference between a quart and a four-incher? I think, I think Evergreen, from the way that I've seen on their website, I haven't bought from them. I think they're using the same pots that I like using. That's those three and a half square with the, uh, deep ribs on the side, a tall pot. Uh, it's not a, it's not a court, but they're three and a half deep landmark cell makes them. Uh, even, even a court container can vary in size depending on where you're getting it. You know, um, I, I, I don't even know what they are. I call them courts. I probably bought them as courts, but they're not as big as some of the courts that are offered elsewhere. So well, my, my court pots are actually just a little over a quart. The ones you get from Landmark to four and a half inch deep squares, they're like 1.1 quarts or something like that. Okay. They're, they're a little bigger than your pots are, Mike. Just, just, I mean, the same size square basically, but they're just a little deeper. That's, that's, well, that's I decided to order from them. I put an order in for them. I guess I was bored, needed to spend more money for <laughs> spring. So, you know, I, I just decided to, and they had some stuff I couldn't get from Spring Meadow, and actually I compared the price and stuff, and they were actually, for some of the stuff Spring Meadow did have, they were still cheaper, but shipping from Wisconsin versus, versus Southern Michigan, so it, it would probably amount to the same thing. Yeah, I, I know I, I just bought all that stuff from Oregon, and freight was a killer on that. I think it averaged out to like two dollars a plant and some of you know and that that's that's a and 600 of those plants were japanese maple seedling so you know the freight was murder they but they were ups uh, boxes you know which is if i put them on a truck with a lot of you know one time i ordered a ton of stuff from them you know and uh, they put them on a truck and i didn't expect it but they shipped them bare root on the truck and just like, here you go, drop them off. And I happened to, I think Pam was having knee surgery. So I'm at the hospital and Dustin's like, hey, this stuff showed up and it's just bare root. And, you know, I'm like, all right, well, put it in the building, wet the roots, throw a tarp on it, we'll deal with it later. So most people would have a heart attack if they, you know, received an order like that. But, you know, in the industry, that's kind of how it works. So 
Yep, you can't get to everything at once. Yeah. Okay, everyone, I'm gonna go back and mute. So <laughs> nice seeing everyone. Hey, thanks, Joe. All right, um, anything else? Mary Rose, you got questions, answers? I have lots of questions, but I um, I have to watch some of the videos, I think, more of the videos that you said are out there. Okay. Yeah, it, you know, the, the, the good thing about being a member is when you're in the members area, the, the topics uh, that whatever we're discussing are timely. So mm -hmm. that way you, you can all, you, you only have to focus on what you should be doing now, which is pretty much what all the rest of us are doing. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's easier to keep up and not be as overwhelmed, you know, especially if you go digging back through the archives and you're like, holy cow, my head's going to explode. You know, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Cindy, um, first of all, I want to thank you for, you know, sharing what you got going on and, uh, let us know, you know, uh, anything else before we get out of here? Not at this moment. No, I probably, I probably do have questions, but they're just kind of all spooling around, uh, trying not to get overwhelmed because I know this is going to be the next spring. My next, I think this would be actually just my official first spring, but. Yeah. And uh, Andy, where, where were you located again? I can't remember. Um, Moline, Illinois. You are all right. I'm right. Yeah, I'm right on the Mississippi River uh, between uh, Davenport and Moline. That's the Quad Cities, is what we're called. Okay. Wow. And then uh, Roger is in Cranesville, Pennsylvania, which is um, pretty close to Erie, right, Roger? Yeah, about 20, 20 some miles away. Yeah. And Tom and Kathy are in uh, Lidditch, PA, which is Lancaster area up there. So. Okay. Just for people that are kind of watching and trying to figure out where where everybody is, and you know, and of course, you, you guys all know that our members are scattered everywhere, from New Mexico to Arizona to Canada. <clears throat> so, so far, we haven't found an area where this doesn't work. So, all right, and uh, if if nobody else has questions, comments, anything to talk about, then we'll. Call Something it I want to want to. Tell Cindy there she's thinking about a place to set up her mist area or anything like that. You need water. Other than that, you can deal with the sun. You can put shade up or whatever, but you got to have water. Yeah, I, I go gonna, from there. I was going to touch on that too. You need water and electricity. So uh, battery. You can go battery. I'm battery. I don't have electricity. Yeah, if you, if you if you go battery, then you can then you need water. Yeah. Okay. I mean my my mist area is the only thing that has stayed the same since I've started. The same location. But, uh, yeah, I think mine has too, but change. mostly because of the timers in, in on the wall. So, you know, no good point to move it away from there. Start start with that, and then you can change anything and everything after that. Yeah, it's that's one easier. of the things I, I need. Aside the mist bed, I, I need to figure out watering because I that took a lot of time last year, hand hand watering with a hose no. of everything. So I've got I to figure that out this year for sure. Auto, automated, you get. I mean, I use. I've got three that I use here the uh, battery timers uh, mm -hmm. that do four yeah, ports. Right. You can okay. set up, I run out four different things off each timer. I don't, I, the only hand watering I do is something, it might be something set down somewhere that I water. I don't yeah. do and if you, uh, if you have the mist system that we sell, the controller will actually run six different valves. You can run one on mist and use the other five to water five different areas. So. Mm -hmm. uh, that, I haven't yeah. I haven't bought it yet. It is on my list of uh, wants, but I haven't gotten that far yet. I know everything takes time. So. All right. Anybody else questions, comments, mean things to say? Tom, I don't want to keep you up too late. Hey, hey, Tom. The uh, small town in your area is as big as mine, or? Uh. I don't know if it's as big as yours, but uh, they, I, there's a gas station. Oh, it's huge then. Yeah, we're hot. Yeah. <laughs> yep, and it, it even has a fire company. <laughs> if we got we have a fire department and a blinker light. So you got a blinker light though. That's that's a big yeah. thing. Yeah. You know? Well, that's <laughs> that's because the two main roads cross on a slight hill there, so uh, many accidents. Yeah, but Lidditz, which is about a mile from us, mile and a half from us, it that that there it's about twelve thousand people now. And the outskirts of the of Lidditz, there's at least another twelve thousand. So, 
anybody anybody that uses mouse traps or steel traps like I used to trap knows about lidits. Right. That's right. So they're all there. Yep. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you. All right. Good night. All right.